Glad that you all are joining us this morning. Um, you know, it was a uh, day before yesterday, around uh, right about in the middle of the day. And um, as I was just talking to the Lord, you know, uh, I heard him give me an expression. And there are many of you, I feel in my spirit, that feel like you are in the middle. You know, some of you have been believing God and maybe your status is just, you're not where you were, but you're not where you're going. You're not where God has promised you, where he told you. And then I want to tell you that some of you are literally, because it's like, you know, uh, what I felt in my spirit was this burden that many of you like feel like mm -hmm. you're in between a rock and a hard place. Many of you feel like, you know, you're going through and it makes no sense. Like, God, could I have done things that bad? Like, could I have messed up that much? Like, you know, why am I going through this of all people? You know, I, I mean, you, and, and you begin to question yourself the longer that you're going through what you're going through. It's like, you know, you're looking for something to make sense. You're looking for some kind of explanation. You're trying to measure things like you have a moment of reconsideration you know, there's that time where you just believe in God and trusting in the Lord. And, you know, you have this faith that all things work together and, you know, you're not pointing the finger or the blame or, you know, you've come to a place of repentance or what have you. And then there's those times it's just like, like, I don't understand this. Like, you know, like, what is the deal? And uh, some of you, you know, you've just been faithful. And he said, just to give you an identification station to let you know in the name of Jesus. And he likened it to Moses and what, what people were going through. And he says to let you know that sometimes it's get harder right before you experience his goodness. And some of you, because of the added pressure, because of the added issues, because of the, the, the more that seems like is going on, you feel like things are further away or you feel like like, you know, is your breakthrough ever going to come? And he said to encourage those of you who are here and, and to let you know. And I was like, well, God, you know, what is the deal? And he said, I have a bone to pick when God has a bone to pick, but you got a promise. Sometimes it's frustrating. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes, you know, and, and, and it makes no sense. But I, I want to encourage you that God is known all the time. And then I'm going to release what God is saying and release his heart in the name of Jesus. You know, the word of the Lord says in Exodus chapter number three, uh, uh, because I want to encourage those of you that are here this morning, Exodus three, verse uh, chapter three, verse seven in the new King James version of the Bible it says, the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. God wanted me to tell you that he has indeed seen your misery. And, and it said, and I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. Some of you feel, you, you know, you're bed has been soaked with tears for so many days, your place of worship, your place of crying, you pouring out. And God said to let you know that he has heard your crying out. He's heard your crying out. And I am concerned about your suffering. This is the words of your father, the words of your God. And he is concerned about you. And he is concerned about the things that you are going through. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land and into a good and spacious land. I want you to be encouraged this morning that no matter what it looks like, no matter what you're going through, that God is coming down, hallelujah, to rescue you from the hand of your bondage and to bring you up out of that into, because God will not bring you out of something and not bring you into something else. And what he's bringing into is a land filled, flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of Israel and the Israelites has reached me. He wanted me to tell you that because it's like, God, I don't even hear you right now. You know, I, and you hear the words and you're doing cool for a minute. And he said, I, he wanted you to know that your cry has reached him and he has seen the way that you have been being oppressed. So now he tells Moses, go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites out of Egypt. And the Lord wanted me to tell you in Jesus name that he has already raised up a deliverer. You're just like, like God, when tell me when. When it's going to happen. And he wanted me to let you know that he already has it in progress. He already has it in process. It's already in the works. And then so Moses begins to speak unto him. 
and, and it was like, uh, you know, who am I? God tells him, I'm going to be with you. And then I'm going to give you a sign. And this will be your sign. Verse 12. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Listen, wherever you are in the name of your sign is that you're going to worship God. In the name of Jesus, you're going to be able to worship even in that place. In Jesus name, you are going to worship in the place where he is bringing you to. You are going to worship. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. And he says, Moses began to say to God, suppose I go and they're asking me who. And he said to check you and let you know that I am who I am. I am who I said I would be. I, I'm not just the one who was. I am the one who is and forever shall be in the name of Jesus. God is not only your alpha. He doesn't just start things, but he is omega. God is a finisher and he will finish that which he started in you and for you in the name of Jesus. And, and he says, I am has been sent to you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so as he goes on further in verse number 16, he says, go and assemble the elders and say to them, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and seen what has been done to you. God wanted you to know this morning that he has seen the things that have been done to you. Don't get it twisted like this happened to Job too, right? God had a bone to pick. He had something that he wanted to prove, but, but God in his faithfulness, he always comes through and what he had in mind was double for his trouble he rendered unto him a double portion even at the end of the day and some of you have been waiting and it seems like a long time you have been in good company Abraham waited for 25 years for the fulfillment of promise listen Joseph he was in prison for 14 years listen Noah waited for 120 years for it to rain and it said that Job waited 60 to 70 years baby let me tell you but when God says that he's on the scene even the children of Israel they were waiting for 400 they were in the land of Egypt for 430 years but let me tell you when God said time is up time is up and that's where we find here God is saying I'm on the scene and when he was it was the, the plagues they said the 10 plagues uh, took place within a 20 week period just about which is a, a little under five months and some of you are like God I can't do do this anymore but part of it is because you don't know how much longer like if I just knew when I was going to break through I could sustain it a little longer and the Lord is saying that breakthrough is already on the way in the name of Jesus and he told him I have watched over you and I've seen what has been done to you and I promise to bring you up out of your misery in the name of Jesus into a land that is flowing with milk and honey and and, and he's told uh, Moses that they're gonna li the elders would listen to you when he spoke to them and I, and so I encourage you I implore you in the name of the Lord for you to listen and that you will hear God even in the midst of your circumstance in Jesus name and, and he goes on to say hallelujah go ahead and tell them that the God of the Hebrews has met with us and let us take a journey in the wilderness to offer sacrifice or worship to God but I know the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him in other words God wanted you to know this morning that wherever you find yourself it, it doesn't matter and there may be opposition that you're going through but to let you know hallelujah that God already has a plan in place verse 20 says so I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptian with all the wonders that I will perform among them after that he will let you go listen God is saying even right there hallelujah that he has some things that he is ready to prove and you just happen to be in the middle but don't get it twisted you have a promise verse number 21 says and I will make the Egyptians favorably disposed towards this people mm -hmm. so that when you leave you will not go out empty handed let me tell you beloved when God does what he said that he was going to do you are not going to go out what empty handed it said every woman is to ask her, her neighbor hallelujah and any woman in, living in her house for articles of silver and gold and for clothing which you will put on your sons and your daughters a a anyway when you come through what you've been going through in Jesus name it's not just going to be you it it's going to be those hallelujah your family those who are connected to you this is going to be a lineage blessing this is going to be a legacy breakthrough in the name of the, you will not go 
out empty handed. And he says, and so you will plunder the Egyptians when God has a bone to pick, but you got to promise sometimes it just feels like you're in the middle, but be encouraged beloved in the name of Jesus, that God does not intend for you to come out without his mighty hand moving in your life or for you to come out empty handed in the name of the Lord. And so then we find here, Moses goes and he's going to talk to Pharaoh and everything, right? And there are some of you who are here. You know, there are those who are already at the point of crossover. You're already crossing over, uh, over into uh, beyond the Red Sea in the name of Jesus. There are those of you that are already crossing over, like literally into your promised land. But there are some of you who are still in this place. And he told me to come and speak to you. Uh, and chapter number five, verse number six goes on to say, this is after Moses is like Pharaoh, like, hold up. This is what we need to do. That same day, uh, it says that Pharaoh gave the order. Order to the slave drivers and or overseers in charge of the people. You are no longer to supply the people with straw for making bricks. Let them go and gather it on their own straw. And so they were making bricks and what have you. And he tells them that don't even give them what they need to make it anymore and require them to make the same number as before. Don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. That is why they're crying out. Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Make the work harder for the people so they keep working and pay no attention to the lies. And some of you like literally feel like the, it went from bad to worse. Like you, the more you seem like you press in, the harder it seems like it has become. And, and it seems like you still have to do the, the same amount, but with less, you have to do, you have to perform, you have to be that much more without as much uh, um, being given to you in the name of the Lord. And the Lord wanted me to encourage those of you who have felt the additional burden, but without the additional support. And, and not only that, but support is literally felt like it's been removed from your life. And God says in the name of Jesus that to encourage you that you are in, hallelujah, you are in good company and to know that this will be a confirming word for you in Jesus name that God is with you and you are about to see his mighty hand move in your life. It goes on to say that the slave driver said to the people, this is what the Pharaoh is saying. I will not give you any more straw. Go get your own straw wherever you can find it. But your word Work will not be reduced at all. And you feel like you trying to find out how to make it work. You robbing Peter to pay Paul in a lot of different accounts. And, and he goes on to say, so the people scattered all over to gather the stubble to use for straw. And it seems like, and, and for some of you feel like you're all over the place. It says the slave drivers kept pressing them saying, complete the work required of you each day, just as you did when you had the straw. And some of you have been expected to keep showing up, to keep smiling, to keep delivering, to keep making it happen, even though you got less that it feels like you're working with. And it says, and Pharaoh slave driver beat the Israelites overseers they had appointed demanding why haven't you met your quota and, and it's like it's been more difficult and 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 if nothing else like they got the nerves to want to beat you down and and so the the, if it's, the Israelite overseers went to Moses and they said why have you treated your and, and even the Pharaoh and they said why have you treated your servants this way your servants are given no straw but we're told to make more your servants are being beaten but the fault is with your people and then Pharaoh goes on to say you're lazy that's what you are lazy that's why you keep saying let us go sacrifice now get to work you will not be given any straw yet you must produce your full quota of bricks let me tell you and that it's not cool what pharaoh was saying but god told me to tell you that you need to hear hear ye the word of the lord and get to work in the name of Jesus, you have it in you to do what needs to be done don't be lazy in your work in your pursuit hallelujah because what faith without works is dead you can still meet the quota you can still make no matter how unfair that it looks in Jesus name because God is working far in you a more greater and exceeding weight of glory in the name of Jesus in the name of the Lord and, and even with what you're going through it's not going to be like that forever understand beloved that this was all about Pharaoh and how he started off in the beginning listen because this was after Joseph had died in the previous generation and died the book starts off in, in, in Exodus chapter number one let me encourage you really quick it says in verse number eight 
that he said to the people, the Israelites have become far too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them or they will become even more numerous. And if war breaks out, we'll join our enemies and fight against us and leave the country. Listen, in other words, this happened because Pharaoh was afraid. He was afraid that they were too big, that they have got, that they, that they were too numerous from them. That he was threatened by them. And you need to understand that regardless of how you see yourself, you are a threat. You are a threat with what feels like less. And so they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built the, the city for Pharaoh. If that shouldn't be good enough, but the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. Let me tell you, boo, hallelujah. It reminded me of the movie. We, we, we like baby kids, we don't die. We multiply in, in G, no matter how much pressure the enemy tried to put on them, the more they continue to multiply and grow. And the Lord is saying for you to acknowledge that no matter how much pressure you've gone through the things that you have experienced you've grown you've grown in grace you've grown in wisdom you've grown in your training you've grown in your prayer life you've grown in your understanding you've grown in your relationship with the Lord hallelujah he, he is working in you a far more exceeding weight of glory and then the word of the Lord says and though they were worked more ruthlessly they made their lives bitter with the harsh labor and with all kind of work but what happened was when the king oh it saw that they continue to grow. Hallelujah. Can't nobody stop what God is doing in your life. Hallelujah. You are continuing to increase in wisdom and stature and in favor. And that is preparing you for where God is taking you in the name of the Lord. They end up having so many children that Pharaoh ended up telling them to kill the babies as they're coming because he knew that there was a deliverer that was coming and God told me to encourage you that though things have gotten tougher the deliverer is already there in the name of Jesus and you are about to see a great deliverance he is just working things out hallelujah even for your good even now and not only that but he God has a score that he needs to settle that he desires to settle so in chapter number six it goes on to say then the Lord said to Moses now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh because of my mighty hand he will let them go he wanted me to encourage you that even though it seems like you 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 haven't begun to win you know even though it seems like some of the odds have been stacked against you to encourage you hallelujah that you are getting ready to see what God is getting ready to do because of God's mighty hand that enemy that oppression has to let you go because of the mighty hand of God he's gonna drive you out of the country that you've been out of the status that you've been out of the bondage that you've been in and God said to Moses I am the Lord I appeared to Abraham Isaac and Jacob as God Almighty but my name but by my name the Lord I did not make myself fully known to them I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan the promised land where they resided as foreigners moreover I have heard the groaning of my people whom the Egyptians are enslaving and I have remembered my covenant God will wanted me to remind you this morning that he has heard your groaning and that he has remembered his covenant in Jesus name. Many of you have a promise. Many of you have promises that God has spoken to those uh, hallelujah ancestors that have gone on before you. There's a lineage. There is a legacy. There is covenant there. There are promises that he made to you. And the Lord says he has remembered his covenant. Therefore say to the Israelites, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the yoke. I will free you from being slaves. I will redeem you with my outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. Let you know, hallelujah, that God already has freedom and redemption on his mind and he's doing it even now. He says, I will take you as my own people and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from under the yoke and I will bring you to the land I swore with uplifted hand to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I I am the Lord. Listen, hallelujah. Sometimes you just need to know that God is on the scene. Hallelujah. That God is who he said he is that God is going to do what he said he was going to do. He said, I'm going to give it to you as a possession. He's reminding you that what I promise, I am faithful to perform it and I'm going to do it. He says, I am the Lord. And Moses reported this to the Israelites, but they didn't listen to him because of their discouragement and harsh labor. And there are those of you who are here this morning and it's hard to hear promises. I mean, it's hard to hear all these things that God is going to do because of your discouragement and harsh labor. But to let you know that God is going to 
do it anyway. God is going to make a way anyway. God is going to come through anyway. In Jesus precious name. In the name of Jesus. And then the plagues go on. They take place. And then we find here in uh, in chapter number 11. This is just one verse and it's in verse number 9. And the word of the Lord says uh, hallelujah that the Lord said to Moses Pharaoh will refuse to listen so that my wonders may be multiplied in Egypt. God has a bone to pick and you're about to see him move. You're about to see mighty signs and wonders in your life in Jesus name. Whatever is needed God is getting ready to do because you are in the middle. You're stuck in between the middle of God having a bone to pick in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Against your opposition and to he is proven that he is great and that he is God. But despite the things that you've been through to let you know that your promise still stands. Great is the Lord's faithfulness and you're about to see God deliver on his word in the name of Jesus. In, in, and then in Exodus chapter number 12 verse 40 it said now the length of time the Israelite people and I'm rounding it to a close. Now the length of time the Israelite people lived in Egypt was 430 years. At the end of the 430 years to the very day all the Lord's divisions left Egypt because the Lord kept vigil that night to bring them out. On this night all the Israelites are to keep a vigil to honor the Lord for their generations to come. Listen let me tell you God is on the scene and he is keeping hold to his word and to his promise and God says you are not going to be there not a day more than he's already authorized. Now what was amazing to me is in Genesis chapter number 15 when he was making the promise to Abraham even in verse number 13 he's uh, 14 it says I will punish the nation they serve as slaves know for certain that for 400 years your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own they will be enslaved and mistreated God told him in advance he told Abraham in advance you weren't aware of the things that you were going to have to endure or encounter or even the time frame but it's already been documented and God says you're not going to be in bondage you're not going to suffer any more than he's already allotted the time for. In other words, your trouble has an expiration date in the name of Jesus. And God is stepping on the scene in Jesus name. And he says, afterwards, I'm going to punish the nation that they've served as slave. And afterward, they will come out with great possession. God already has in mind that you will not go out empty handed in the name of the Lord. And to remind you, according to Exodus chapter number 12, verse 40, hallelujah, that at the end of the time that God has said to the very day, hallelujah, that you are going to leave that issue you are going to be delivered of that issue you are going to see the mighty hand of the Lord in Jesus mighty name because God is keeping a vigil hallelujah to bring you out and to fulfill his promise and his word in the name of Jesus and some of you feel like Lady Jeremiah you know thank God that the deliverer is on the way thank God that he is here and looking at the templates this is something that the Lord spoke to me because it was like God you know I want to see you come through you know this that, and the other this was some months ago and he said if, if, if I take two more weeks, if I take two more months, what is it to you? Just know that you're closer than you thought you were. Just know that it's uh, just about over. And he wanted me to encourage those of you, even though they were talking about the deliverer is here, the deliverer is on his way and things seem more difficult. Do you know how joyous it would be four to five months compared to 430 years? Hallelujah. God says to let you know your breakthrough is upon you. Your breakthrough is here in the name of Jesus. So, Father, fulfill your very word in the name of the Lord. He, he said that some of you feel it, it's like uh, when God has a bone to pick and you have a promise. It's like, you know, when he, he's put you in this fight, but he wants you to know that he's right there on the scene and he's not going to let you lose. Your big brother, Jesus, is right there. And he says, hallelujah, I got this. I'm scoping it out. I'm not going to allow you to endure anything more than, than, than because it was training you. It was spurring you. It was preparing you but know that I have not left the scene and I'm ready to jump in the ring in the name of the Lord God has you in the name of Jesus and he said that you are closer than you think you are closer you may feel like you're exhausted you're tired hallelujah but you're closer than you think he's heard you he's heard your cry he's heard your plea in the name of Jesus you felt like you're in between a rock and a hard place matter of fact you're making rocks listen the Israelites were making 
bricks. Uh, but he says in the name of the Lord that he has heard you and your deliverer is already here. Hallelujah. It's already in the works and your breakthrough is certain in Jesus name. And he is bringing you out to bring you into all the things that he has spoken over your life. He's promised you and it's much greater than you imagine. So father, this morning, we are grateful to you. We are grateful to your word. We are grateful to your faithfulness. There is none like you. Father, thank you for acknowledging your people and their plight and our understanding that it's not about us per se, but it's something that you already spoke. Thank you, Father, that there is an end date, that there is a resolution that everything your people are encountering. And even though it seems like things have become tougher, things have become more difficult, but the, the, that we will not be so focused on our circumstance and our present situation that we don't see that there's something happening that is far more greater. Matter of fact, it's become more difficult because they're last ditch efforts because the time is up. The time is at hand. And thank you that we will not endure those things any more than, than we have not a day longer than, than it has already been allowed or authorized because you've already spoken it and you know what it was necessary for hallelujah to get us to the place where we needed to be so that when we do come out we will not return in the name of Jesus listen the, the Israelites had to be fed up enough so that they wouldn't want to return to their bondage they, they, they wouldn't want to return to their slavery as we know that some of them were like I don't know that, that it's been too much but there comes a time when you've been through just enough hell that you refuse to look back you refuse to turn back you refuse to settle you refuse to compromise you refuse to be okay listen Hallelujah. I may not know what's before me, but it got to be better than this. Hallelujah. God is saying, I am looking for you to be ready to embrace what is next now in the name of Jesus. I need you to be in a place that you're ready to move forward, where you never look back, where you never return in the name of Jesus. So Father, we say unto you that we are ready. We will not look back. We are not of them that draw back, but we believe into the saving of the soul that your redemption not only draw a night, but it is at hand. And so we are are ready. We are ready to embrace you. We are ready to embrace the new and we will not make idols out of our circumstance, our situation, or even what you're bringing us into. Father, thank you for the promised land. And in spite of the oppression, in spite of things getting more difficult, hallelujah, and, and feel, feeling like we got to make the same do, do we got to do more with less. God, I thank you that you are sufficient and you will make sure that we are able to do everything that's needed. Father, we have misperceived the the, the, who you've put in us, who you've made us to be. We have mis misperceived, we misdiagnosed the, the ability that you put on the inside of us. And that's the intimidation factor of it all. Because some of your people have been designated, they've been authorized, they've been ordained to be the one to break the generational curse. They, they've been des designated to be the one to break the curses off of their bloodline. They've been designated to be oh, the first one. Hallelujah. They've been designated to be the first one out of the slave out of the bondage. They've been desert and, and, and the enemy knows with the things that you've called them unto and knows that the time is short. And so father, instead of us looking like, Oh, woe is me. We will be able to begin to see how, uh, what the greatness that you put on the inside of us. And we must be worth something of targeting. And so father, we will look hallelujah and begin to see ourselves as you see us, the identity that you put inside of us and the promise that you put inside of us that would cause us to be target worthy. Hello. Hallelujah. Because some of us need to understand that it wouldn't be so difficult. It wouldn't be so difficult if the call wasn't so great upon our lives. And so, Father, thank you for encouraging us. Thank you for strengthening us. Thank you that you are more than enough. And Father, even while you settle in scores, <laughs> because it's about something so much bigger than us, Father, thank you that you are with us every step of the way. Father, thank you that you will not suffer us to bear or endure any more than, than, than what is already spoken, what has already been designated, what, which already we have what's in us to be able to do it and you have hallelujah a far greater reason and working hallelujah otherwise we wouldn't have had to endure it in Jesus name and so father I thank you right now hallelujah as you strengthen your people as you encourage your people that whatever they're going through whether it be hardship and their finances whether it be hardship with a relationships interaction with family members if some with spouses some even with their children there are some that are going through it with people in their family 
family. There are some, Father, that are facing um, heavy and, and serious circumstances, but they are not alone in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, instead of us looking, oh, woe is me, poor me, and, uh, and, and instead of seeing it as, you know, um, uh, the, the, the being a victim and having a victim mentality, we will see ourselves that we are more than equipped for this battle, for this struggle, for this uh, hallelujah. And we will understand and know that breakthrough is upon us and breakthrough is here in Jesus name. Thank you for strength and thank you for endurance. Thank you, Father, that the deliverer is here. Thank you, Father, that the deliverer is on the scene. Hallelujah. And what did Moses represent? Not just a deliverer, hallelujah, but he represented direction. Oh, Father, thank you that direction is on the scene. Hallelujah. And that which we needed, you are causing to join to us in the name of the Lord. Moses had been being raised in Pharaoh's house. He wasn't raised with the, with the Israelites, but God is joining what you need with you in the name of the Lord. See the things that you've been waiting for were being prepared for you. They were being made for you. And while God was making these telling uh, and giving the downloads to Moses, the Israelites had no idea. And some of you have had no idea that God was already raising up everything that you needed behind the scenes and he was going to give the direction that was needed and necessary. He's been fine tuning your ear to be able to hear from him. He's been causing you to even have what you need. Hallelujah. To be able to express and demonstrate the miracle work and signs of God in the name of the Lord and miracles and signs and wonders shall be what you see. Father, thank you for bringing us a place into a place of hallelujah of shock and awe and wonder and we will see you as the great big God, as we see you bring us out with your mighty outstretched hand and your hand of deliverance and your hand uh, of miraculous works in Jesus name. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that you are able to do anything but fail in the name of the Lord. And no matter how impossible things may seem, that just means how much more ridiculous of a way that you are getting ready to reverse that situation. You are getting ready to turn it around. We are getting ready to see great deliverance, mass deliverance, mass breakthrough in the name of the Lord. Father, I thank you in Jesus name that we will see people come from destitution. To their double in the name of Jesus, double the breakthrough, double the deliverance, double the financial prosperity, double the establishment, double the security in you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you that we will have more than enough that they, hallelujah, that the breakthrough will contain things that are much they're so big they're bigger than us we need assistance even to carry to be able to carry the blessings and the provision that you have on this way and I'm not talking about just provision when it comes to money father I thank you that you are restoring joy unto your people hope unto your people peace that flows like a river to your people in the name of the Lord father I thank you for shifting mindsets thank you for restoring love unto your people love like they have never known before in the name of Jesus father thank you we appreciate it when you uh, allowed us to have the garlics the leeks and onions but father you know what's amazing to me is when God made the promise of the promised land everything was sweet oh God I thank you that we are getting ready we've already had the salty we've already had the savory we are getting ready to experience the sweet of God the goodness of God even in our lives in Jesus name it says that they come into a place of a land flowing with milk and honey, a land of figs and pomegranates, of grapes. Oh God. In other words, he said, I'm going to give you more than just one thing. Father, I thank you that you're getting ready to cause your people to come into a place. Hallelujah. Of just more than one thing, of more than one breakthrough, of more than one breakout. Father, you are able to cause hallelujah things to work out with their children and with their family at the same time. You are able to cause the things, the situation to work out, hallelujah, with their marriage and with their business. You're able to cause the things uh, to work out concerning their homes, their livelihood, hallelujah, and their ministry. God, you are able to do more than one thing at, at one time in the name of Jesus. So Father, may we not see ourselves, oh God, as grasshoppers. May we not look upon the opposition as giants, but may we understand that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we have absolutely everything that we need in the name of the Lord. Father, I thank you that you are getting ready to cause your people to walk through, walk past, walk over, cross over. Hallelujah. Even what seems like 
seas, seas of issues, seas of whatever feels like has been a barricade, whatever seems like it's in between them and their breakthrough. Father God, I thank you that you are able to cause a route to be made. Oh God, you are the God that is able, hallelujah, to provide a way in the wilderness. You are able to provide, hallelujah, water and streams in the desert. Oh God, and in, in um, Isaiah chapter number 43, it, it talks about, uh, God tells them, you know, because they always were recounting, you know, how God brought them out of Egypt. They were always recounting, you know, how God made the way right and how he delivered them, you know, out of Egypt and, 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 and they crossed over the Red Sea and they were so focused on their tape of how God did it before that, that God said, forget the former things. Oh God, help us to forget how you moved in the past. So we're open, hallelujah, to see how you're getting ready to do this thing now. Then he goes on and he said, behold, I will do a new thing. What you need to know is that I'm God and I'm still going to do it. You need to know that I'm God and I'm still able to make a way, but you've been so focused on seeing me do it the way I did it before. Forget the former thing. Forget the thing in the way you saw me do it before because you are getting ready to see something new. I am not limited. I am not stuck. You are about to see amazing. Just because you saw me move a certain way for somebody else don't mean that that's how I'm going to move for you. So Father, thank you for showing up on the scene. Thank you that you are literally going to blow our mind. Thank you that as we call upon you, we call unto you, you're going to be ready to show your people great and mighty things that they knew not of. Father, thank you this morning that you have heard our cries. You've heard the pleas. You've heard the plights of your people. Thank you that you will be so loving enough to let them know that I check. I heard you. I heard you. I, your tears have come up before me. I have heard them. I have seen them. And he says that I have come to keep my promise. I have I remembered my covenant to you and I have come to deliver you. Hallelujah. And a matter of fact, the deliverer has already been on the way. So, Father, I thank you for the breakthrough that your people are getting ready to see. Not only not you're able to do it right now. You're able to do it today. But there are some that are breaking through in a massive, mighty way. Hallelujah. Even in this next month, there are those who are getting at 11, 20, 2019. Oh my God. Hallelujah. There are some that are getting ready to see a massive move of the Lord even between now and 11, 29, 2019. There are those that are getting ready to see mighty moves of you, Father Basha, great Jehovah, even before the first week of December. There are those that are going to see your mighty hand of work. Hallelujah. Miracles are coming long away. The promise is being fulfilled even by Christmas. It's, it's not about, you know, a man-made holiday, but, but, but by this time, God has a way of designating a time and a season on the calendar. Not one day more, not one day less. Hallelujah. God says, I'm you, shall see the goodness of the Lord Jehovah. And there are those of you, hallelujah, at the turn of the new year, there are some of you who are going to see a mighty great deliverance by March. I just see March. It is big. Hallelujah. God is causing you to spring so much further ahead. Let me let you know that God is a God. Thank you, Father, that you will make up for lost time, that you will render a redemption in such a way in the name of the Lord that they will not remember the former things. They will not remember the things that they've had to endure and go through, Father, for what is coming is so much greater. Father, thank you for the shock and the awe. Hallelujah. We are bracing ourselves for the mighty movement of you, Lord Jehovah, and we give you glory right now. Hallelujah. And we will be faithful to give your name the praise, the honor, and glory. We will be faithful not to forget who you are and the things, hallelujah, and the and the you that we've come to know even in this place. Huh? And even through the difficulties that we've experienced, Father, it has cultivated a, a relationship with you that we would not have with you without uh, the opposition because the truth be told, there are some of you who wouldn't pray like you pray. You wouldn't attend service like you attend service. You wouldn't even know about, uh, about the, the, the ability for the Lord to speak to people like you've been able to see him speak to this one and speak to this one. You've been able to hear God like you've never heard him before for many of you, even yourself, and you wouldn't have had that cultivation of that level of relationship had you not endured the things that you endured. So Father, thank you. Hallelujah. We are as David who said that it was good that I was afflicted. Oh God, it was good that I was afflicted. Father, I thank you. There are some that they've asked you like Paul to take away their thorn in their side more than once. Oh God, but we understand that your grace is for sufficient for us in the name of the Jesus. Hallelujah. And even in our weakness, your strength is made perfect. And so we rest in you and we understand that great is your faithfulness in the name of the Lord. And as we say that it was good 
but that we were afflicted. Father, thank you for the so much greater, hallelujah, and the so much then and beyond so that we will have a testimony that we will go back and we will strengthen our brothers and encourage them in Jesus name that you are the great deliverer. Father, there are some of you that are get, getting ready to experience your goodness just so you can put them on display that you are still faithful and you are yet a worker of miracles. Hallelujah. So they will incite faith in others to trust you again, believe God big again and see the hand of God like they had never experienced it before in the name of Jesus to bring all men, to draw all men unto thee in Jesus name. Father, thank you for the cultivation of intimacy with us. Oh God, thank you for coming and visiting your people late in the midnight hour. Father, may they never forfeit. May they not forfeit the relationship that they've cultivated with you in this uh, in this time of burden, of issue. Oh God, for there is a breakthrough that is coming. Father, and we will be remiss if we, if we lost sight of the relationship we've had with you. So may we continue to prioritize you, prioritize time with you, prioritize our love relationship with you, our intimacy see with you. May uh, our relationship not be based off of need, but may it be based off of our desire to be in connection and connectivity with you. Father, may we not be so busy living um, living in, in, the, in the blessed life. I, I'll just put it like that to where we don't continue to connect with you and your heart. Listen, uh, as Moses had the, the, the children, they were in Egypt, uh, they were in the wilderness, excuse me. And he said in Deuteronomy, Hallelujah. Chapter number eight, lest you eat and become full and you forget to thank God. You forget you to remember God. This is all God wants you to do. He wants you to have, he wants you to be, but he says, don't forget me when you get where you're going. Don't forget me. Don't forget our relationship. Father, may your people never be so busy and preoccupied with the blessing that they forget the God who had delivered them, who made the way in Jesus name. Father, may we prioritize you. May we not make an idol of the things that they are getting ready to experience in their lives in Jesus name. And I know that they <laughs> Moses ended up telling them, he said, listen, I prophesy against you this day that if you do, and he tells them, you know, all these other things are going to happen. Listen, because in my heart is, 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 I feel the weight of the Lord. I feel the burden of our father because as humans, we are prone to be preoccupied with the things that are pleasurable. We are preoccupied from that. You know, people respond to pleasure and to pain. That's why a lot of the times we learn more in our painful circumstance than we do in the times of pleasure when things are good and cool. And so sometimes the enemy will even try to bless you. So you think it is a blessing to preoccupy you from the bigger picture and that's connection with the Lord. And so father is saying, don't forget me. I'm going to do it. Don't forget me. Make sure you remember me. And so father, I pray right now because your people will be tempted to, to enjoy all of the good things and not call on you as much because they don't have the same need for you. And I pray in those moments mm -hmm. that they're reminded that you are their very best friend and that they would return to their first love, knowing that you love them first, that they will remember the times of beauty and splendor that they had with you when you would literally be the one who rocked them to sleep at night. Father, may they have a heart that is cultivated with you and upon you, Father, in Jesus name. May you renew the intimacy of your people like never before in the name of Jesus. May they have a heart for you and a heart for the things of you like never before, Father. May they call upon you late in the midnight hour, early in the day. May the Rebosha, you created us to walk with you. And the you wanted you created a whole garden experience for us to for you to be able to walk with us through the cool of the day. And so may we desire that constant connectivity with your heart and with your presence, Father. And may we continue to cultivate and work your garden to continue to beautify it, Father, so that you will desire to walk with us and talk with us in the name of Jesus. Father, may we have that closeness with you like never before in the name of Jesus. Father, may we be the friend of God because you are looking for relationship and intimacy. May we look unto you to be our very best friend, God, in the name of Jesus. And there's nothing that he won't do for his friends. Oh, God, thank you.
this morning, hallelujah, for just renewing and re inciting a desire and a passion for your people to be hungry for you and that we can understand that we can walk with you and talk to you all throughout the day and you will speak to us. Father, this is the hour where you pour out your spirit upon all flesh. And so, Father, may we desire to have your spirit poured upon us like never before in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that our hearts will be pressured and be pure towards you, Father. Hallelujah, to call upon you and raise your name, to make your name great and you will draw, you will draw all men unto yourself. Father, I thank you, hallelujah, that as you draw all men unto yourself, you will also draw the things that are needed. You will draw the assistance that is needed. You will draw everything that is needed, Father. And so I pray, I pray, I pray that your people not be preoccupied. May our hearts not be preoccupied. May our lives not be preoccupied. But may we desire your presence more than anything else in Jesus name. And I pray that your people will go and they will convert others. Blessings to you, Bishop Allen. Much love to you, man of God. Thank you for all that you do for kingdom in Jesus name. Thank you for your revelatory words. Thank you for the gift of God that you are. Father, we glorify you now. I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice, Father. And Father, I just pray for in this hour, hallelujah, that your people will return to their first love, that the things that we do, we do it not out of duty, but may we be diligent with our relationship with you to continue to cultivate a place of intimacy where we make time for you, where you are not just an order of the day, but we are delighted to spend time in your presence in Jesus name. Father, there are those that they're getting ready to walk into the goodness of you, the things of you in Jesus name. And so th there will be choices that need to be made may they make you a priority in Jesus name because I'm telling you in advance beloved you will be tempted to forget the Lord your God you will be tempted and you may not even realize it because you will be preoccupied with the things that he is adding to your life and sometimes you won't even realize that you haven't made time for the Lord he said make me your priority don't forget me because I'm going to do what I said that I was going to do saith God in Jesus name Apostle Stanley Farrar much love to you man of God I appreciate you and kingdom in Jesus name and your consistency and your faithfulness in the name of Jesus father I thank you that your promises are true they are yes and they are man to goodness and glory of you father in Jesus name oh father thank you for the relationship you're cultivating with your people may they go forward in you may they go forward in you in Jesus name in Jesus name, I just hear the father's heart this morning. And he says, I want to walk with you. I want not just you to walk with me. You know, I want to walk with you. I want to walk with you throughout your day, throughout your everyday life. I want to go to work with you. I want to not only go to work with you. I want to be in business with you. I want, you know, it's like, you know, we want to partner with the Lord and, and father's heart is like, I want to do it with you. You are not alone. And he says, I want to be part of your everyday life consider me this do ye in remembrance of me God is looking for us to remember him and all that we do listen it's all about relationship there are things that are getting ready to shift in this world there are things that have already shifted in this era and in this life and you need a relationship with father you need to know the holy spirit you need to know his voice and you will never be off track you will always be a step ahead you will have divine intellect you will have divine inside information you will not be caught off guard in the name of jesus there are many of you that have been exposed of things because you did not you felt like you were caught off guard like you didn't even see it coming but the Lord would say that as you spend time with me I'll make sure you have every heads up I'll make sure that you know what to do before you get there I'll make sure hallelujah that I word your mouth I'll make sure that you are in the right places at the right time I will make sure saith God in Jesus name absolutely no more ambushes God is saying if you spend the time with me you will hear my voice and I will warn you and I will show you things father I thank you right now that you are getting ready for those who will desire to connect with you and connect with your heart on that level. Father, you will reveal to them dreams. They will have visions. There were some um, that, that they considered 
Peter to have trances. Father, there are those, hallelujah, that you are going to give dreams and visions and insight. Father, there are those that are nabi, that they are going to hear you like never before, that they will flow in the spirit. Father, this is the day, this is the hour, you know, and I'm not going to make a person be a prophet that's not a prophet because the office is serious and you don't want to flow where you don't have the grace to go. But listen, God is saying, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And one of the gifts of the spirit not the fruit of the spirit, but the gifts of the spirit is the spirit of prophecy. God is saying, I've enabled you to be able to speak, decree and declare out of your own mouth as this is the year of the open mouth, the year, the decade, excuse me, of the open mouth, the decade of pay. I've given you the ability to decree and declare a thing and it shall be established in Jesus name. One of the, another gift of the spirit is what the word of knowledge. You will have divine inside information. Another gift of the spirit is the word of wisdom. You will have the wisdom that you need to know how to apply the information that you get the uh, apply the info because information and if it's misapplied or ununderstood it can be just as dangerous if not more as not knowing at all and so father thank you that as we are filled with your spirit hallelujah that you will lead us and guide us into all things you will teach us all things you will teach us all truths in Jesus name another gift of the spirit is the gift of discernment you will give us the ability to discern to understand to know to perceive receive in Jesus name. Father, heighten our awareness in the name of Jesus. Listen, another gift of the spirit, not only a tongue, but the interpretation of tongues. In other words, and uh, you will be able to understand and interpret the other language of others, how they're speaking in Jesus name. As you flow through the gifts of the spirit, these are gifts that are available to you as you are filled with the spirit of God. At any moment you can flow in these things. You will be able to flow. Hallelujah. In the gift of faith, those of you, hallelujah, Hallelujah. It's one thing to have faith, but it's another thing. Hallelujah. To flow in the gift of faith. You will be able to flow in the workings of miracles. If there's a miracle that you need, the spirit of God that is on the inside of you is able to tap into the gift. Hallelujah. Of working of miracles in Jesus name. I release that upon you today to understand that what is at your disposal, what you have access to this morning in Jesus name. And so father, hallelujah, but by your divine grace, hallelujah. I release that that insight, that intel to your people in Jesus name so that they will know they will know what they have access to in this hour in Jesus name, that they would be not ignorant. Hallelujah. Of the grace of you, of the ability of you in the name of the Lord. Father, I thank you. Hallelujah. That you will have those that operate in the gifts of healing in Jesus name because they are filled with your spirit. So they have access to the gift of healing. Healing is the children's prayer. They will have the ability. Hallelujah. To flow through the spirit of God, hallelujah, in the, in, in the workings of miracles, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And I give you glory now. I thank you now. We worship you now in the name of Jesus. It looks like we're having issues on Periscope. Hallelujah. We will be able to operate in diverse kinds of tongues. We won't even understand, but you understand that you know, and you will cause us to operate in supernatural ability. Father, I thank you. Hallelujah. For the supernatural ability that you are enabling your people in Jesus precious name. Father, I thank you. Hallelujah. That where other people are ordinary, hallelujah, that you are causing your people to be extraordinary. Father, I thank you. Even now, according to Daniel chapter number 10, it talks about, um, even how the, 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 the Hebrew boys, what were they, that God, that God caused them to be 10 times better, 10 times more. They excel. Father, thank you for the excellence. Hallelujah. The acceleration upon your people in Jesus name. Thank you. That you've enabled your people and they shall be 10 times more. It may not make sense to other, but you've given them the ability to be that much more in everything that they do. Father, I thank you that your hand will be upon them and everything that you cause them to do. And they will experience the goodness of you, the Lord God almighty in Jesus name. And so father, I release that upon your people, even now in the name of the Lord, hallelujah, the gift, the hallelujah, the grace uh, of 10 times more of 10 times better of 10 times greater greater in Jesus name. Thank you, Father, for your spirit. Thank you, Father, for enabling us. Thank you, Father, for divine access. And we give you glory now. Hallelujah, that we are able to function in because of our relationship with you, because of our love for you. And we give you glory and we thank you for all things in Jesus precious name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 
thank you, Lord, for those of you who are here. We had, you know, I think 120 something on Periscope and I'm grateful for the 23 of you on Facebook Live. I'm grateful, hallelujah, that you are getting ready to experience a mighty move of God, a mighty shift of the Lord. The Lord's grace and favor be upon you in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of the Lord. You have to get this. You have to get this. Otherwise, I would hate for you to um, to experience the, uh, uh, even a brief moment of being in, in a place of um, not having the divine intelligence of a Holy Spirit and a Father Spirit being with you and upon you in your everyday life. It is what makes you, hallelujah, be able to operate in the supernatural realm like never before in the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit in you, being able to tap into the Spirit of God on the inside of you, understanding that you are a, a spirit being that is having a human experience and you have access to so much more, but we've been living beneath of our privilege because we have limited ourselves to the humanity and to the rules of this world, but we are not bound to the rules of this world. We operate under such a greater establishment of kingdom. Hallelujah. And that is the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And so to know the heart of our father, to know the heart of your God in Jesus name and to understand that your deliverance is not on the way. It's already on the scene. And in not many days, hence you shall see not uh, the Lord says you will not encounter things, not a day longer, not a day longer than what has already be, been pre-designed and pre uh, uh, predisposed preset in Jesus name, because God is keeping a vigil a vigil and he's keeping a watch and he's already heard your cries and your pleas in Jesus name. And you are about to experience a mighty deliverance, but don't forget the Lord, your God, when you are in your land and your place of promise in Jesus name. God is settling scores and also he is showing forth his greatness and his goodness. Hallelujah. That you would be able to know that that is your God, that you will experience that this will be your norm is a supernatural awe and the wonder that God wants to render unto you that you will realize that you live in a place that miracles, hallelujah, signs and wonders and breakthrough is your every day. It is your norm. You expect that you live in it. Hallelujah. And you, the Lord through his spirit facilitates those things through you. And so father, we thank you that you've given us ability Hallelujah, where we can partner with you. You partner with us in the things that you've put on the inside of us. And we take that not for granted. Father, thank you for the, what your people are getting ready to see. And may they not take you for granted, not a single moment in Jesus name. Father, I give you glory and we thank you for all things in Jesus name. Hallelujah. I give you glory. I'm thankful for you and I bless your holy name. Amen and amen. Beloved, I love you all so much. And I know it's not just me, but it's your father's love for you. Like he has such a tender love for you personally. It, and so many times we think it's about these people who are doing these great big things. But he is such a personal, intimate father where he knows you by name. And he says, I've heard you and I'm coming. <laughs> I've heard you and I've already got a plan. I've heard you and my plan is already in work in Jesus name. And he calls you by name and I, I regard you in my heart as such. And I know it's the heart of our father as he's a good, good father. And you're about to see his goodness. But as he has such a heart, he says, don't violate his heart and how much he loves you by taking him for granted or by forgetting him. The Lord says, continue to make time for him. Don't be such that you receive the blessing of the Lord and you forget God. I don't want to be like Moses and prophesy the things that will come against you if you forget him. Just make sure you make time for God. Father, may we always make time for you. May it not take difficulty and issues and harsh burdens for us to desire to spend time with you, for us not to have to go through that it would bring us to our knees, but we would go to our knees. We would lay prostrate before you out of intimacy and reverence for you in Jesus name. May we worship you for the good father that you are and not just for our breakthroughs. May we never be ungrateful just for you and your presence. There's nothing like it. This one thing David said, have I desired of the Lord? <laughs> 
that I would dwell in his presence forever, not just in a church, not just a physical tabernacle, but I realized that his presence tabernacles on the inside of me. May you always desire the presence of the Lord in Jesus name. Much love to you all as you experience the goodness of your God. Cultivate that deep personal relationship with him. Spend time with him because he desires to spend time with you and you will hear him. You will see him. Some of you are just like, I don't hear God. If you spend the time, you'll learn his voice and all the many ways that he speaks and he changes. There's so many beautiful facets of him. He speaks through his word. He speaks not only through his written word. He speaks audibly. He does. He shows you things. He speaks through nature. He speaks through people. God, he's he's always speaking. If you will ever just slow down and understand that it might not be the way that you're expecting. May you be open. The Bible says in Matthew chapter number eight. 18 verse 3 and I'm going to bring this to a close um, that we must come as little children in wide eyed wonder. Children see the beauty in everything because they are like always looking. Their eyes are wide open and they're in awe and they ask why, how, why, how, <laughs> you know, and everything is a discovery. May you live in the greatness and the goodness of the Lord in such a way that everything is a beauty and delight. And, and, and when you accept, you're like, God, how did you do that? He is a miracle worker. May you have wide eyed wonder because the things that you are getting ready to see. Oh, my God. Habakkuk one and five. It says, brace yourself for a shock because you're going to see something in your days that you have never seen before. May you be in wide eyed wonder for what you are about to experience. God do in Jesus name. We decree and declare it is so. And so it is in the name of the Lord. God. God bless you, Yvette Doreen. Much love to you all that are here. I'm grateful for everyone. If I didn't call out your name, please know that I love you. And I'm expecting a mighty move of the Lord. And I can't wait to hear your testimonies that are getting ready to come forth. I'm telling you, it's coming out of the place of intimacy. That's where it happens. And that's where you're going to experience it. And then as you continue to cultivate that, it's going to be win after win after win. God is great and it's getting ready to be amazing in your life. So get ready for God to literally blow your mind and there shall be a performance in Jesus name. Get ready with the wide eyed wonder of the Lord to walk with him every day, all throughout the day. And there is nothing, there is nothing that shall be impossible for you because because there is nothing that is impossible with our God. Listen, much love to you. Have an amazing day in the name of Jesus. I'm going to release this song that God instructed me to release um, as we're going out for today. Hallelujah. And I just believe that somebody's faith was increased today as you continue to go forth. Thank you for sharing and inviting. Favy, thank you so much for sharing on every platform she said um, that she is connected to. Um, we're going to go out and worship this morning. Um, I heard this song in my spirit. This song is by Priyana Babineau and it's called My Hands Are Lifted Up. Um, so we're going to go uh, out with this. Much love to you. Have an amazing day. <laughs> thank you, Father. Who I glorify you. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for what you're getting ready to do in, your li in the lives of your people. Thank you for shifting us. Thank you even now in Jesus name.